name is Matthew and you are nice to meet you welcome to the black bear resort I'll be training you this morning so um, I'll be looking at my notes on the computer a lot so just so you know I don't want to forget anything um, I'm also going to be speaking softly or whispering as next door there is a, um, a meeting or an interview of some kind going on that the general manager is doing and um, we wouldn't want to disturb them so is it okay if I eat some licorice while I train you okay great that's great I didn't eat breakfast this morning. Um, so I'm pretty hungry. Um, it's early right now. So we probably won't see any guests for a while. So it's not like they'll see me eating or anything. Would you like some licorice? No. Okay. We get a 50% discount on food and drinks, not including alcoholic beverages, at the restaurant on days that we work. So that applies before and after your shift. So you can have breakfast before your shift and get 50% off. On days we don't work, we get 30% off. Um, soup and soda is free at any time. You can use the pool and the hot tubs as long as we are below 75% capacity. Otherwise, the guests might find it too crowded in the pool area. You get one 30 minute break, unpaid break per shift. The restaurant is open from 8 a.m. till 2, closed from 2 to 5, and open from 5 till 10 p.m. If someone calls about the specials at the restaurant, there is a list up there. Over there. Um, so we use three different programs to uh, work here. We use the program Room Master, mainly to check people in and out and to make reservations. We use Kipsu to have conversations via text message with the guests. And we use Vision Line to make key cards for the guests. Check out time is 11 o'clock. Check in is 4 o'clock. You check someone out. You would go into Room Master like this, how I'm doing on the computer now. We then ask the guest for their room number. After that, you can confirm the name on the room. As sometimes people will mix up um, what room they were in. Then you can open up their room on here. You can tell them the amount of the charge for example, $200. Then you can ask if they would like us to charge the credit cards on file. After that, we can ask them if they want a printed copy of their receipt or if they, they want their receipt emailed to them. After they, you ask them if they want their receipt emailed, we can ask them if they enjoyed their stay. After 
answer the answer we can tell them that they can leave in a nice way of course then we can go ahead and charge their credit card uh, by entering their credit card number on the interact machine if they want their printed receipt printed we can print their receipt after we have charged their credit card and inserted their credit card so we type in the credit card number and press ok a few times until it gives us a receipt to insert the credit card we click insert our room master then we log out the receipt from the interact machine to see what type of card it was Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and so on. Then we look um, for the code for the type of card they have. The cards are all down here. So then we type in the code and press tab. Then we type in the amount of the charge then press tab then we enter in the approval code on the receipt if they want to pay with cash you can use the calculator or do the math in your head to figure out how much change to give them then you would give them the change then you can click insert then find the code for the cash on this list and then type in the code and then enter how much cash they gave you the amount after you give them their change of course now I'll tell you about the different types of rooms and chalets so we have 57 rooms in the hotel not very many. We have six different room types. We have our classic room. The cheapest room at the resort. The classic room doesn't have a patio. And it's near a high traffic area. Close to offices and the restaurant. It has a queen bed. The classic room also has a stable view, a view of the horse stables. We also have a deluxe fireplace room with a parking lot view. The room has one king bed and does include a fireplace, of course. It also includes a patio. Yeah, that's a good question. Guests can burn fire logs that come in packages. We have some down there um, in the fireplaces. Um, we have some down there. Um, should I say in this cupboard? We down there we have some. Guests are not allowed to burn the wood from the trees. From tree wood from trees. In our fireplaces, they can only burn the fire logs that come in packages, okay? We also have our standard king room. It has a king-size bed and does include a patio, but there is no view since a rotating wall is in the way. We also have our deluxe fireplace room with a stable view. It's the same room as I just told you about uh, except for the view it has a stable view not a parking lot view that's why it's more expensive um, then we have our executive king room our most expensive room the executive king comes with a stable view and a private patio two sinks in the bathroom and a two-person walk-in shower, a king-size bed, and uh, 1 p.m. checkout time. Then we have our double queen rooms. We have a 
double queen room with the parking lot view. A double queen room with the stable view. Both of these rooms have patios. We also have the cheaper standard double queen room, which does have a patio, but has no view as there's a rotating wall in the way. So those are all our hotel rooms. I'll tell you about the chalets now. Yes, the chalets are like cabins. Um, all of our chalets include full kitchens and barbecues. So, that would be the main difference, in my opinion, between a chalet and a hotel. Um, we have our A-frame chalets, which have three bedrooms, two queens downstairs, and one double upstairs. If you look at the code here, The chalet code, the, sorry, the chalet with the code CA has 1.5 bathrooms. Yeah, 1.5 bathrooms, meaning one of the bathrooms in the chalet is quite small. So, the, the CA chalet has two bathrooms. This chalet with the code CC has one bathroom in it. Then we have our cedar bungalow chalet. Bungalow, of course, meaning that there is one floor. Um, there isn't an upstairs. The cedar bungalow has three queen bedrooms with three queen bedrooms, should I say. Then we have our two boxes. Each two box has an A side and a B side. <laughs> So it's two chalets in one building. Of course, guests can book one side of this duplex or both sides if they want to. Yes, A side and B side are different. The A side has two bedrooms, both with queen beds. The B side has one bedroom with a queen bed in it. Then we have the Executive Chalet and the Black Bear Manor. Both of these chalets have four bedrooms with king-sized beds and two bathrooms. The Black Bear Manor is located off our property near the Augustine Lake Golf Course. The Executive Chalet is on our property. And that's all the chalets we have. Please try to remember that chalets are a three night minimum for the summer, a two night minimum for any time other than the summer, and a three night minimum on long weekends. For rooms in the hotel, you can book one night if it's on a weekday and not in the summer. Rooms are a two night minimum on weekends and a three night minimum on long weekends. In the summer, rooms are a two night minimum. I know, it's a bit complicated. Also, you can book a hotel room for one day on the weekend if you already or sorry, should I say, if you're already in the week before the weekend. That might be a little bit confusing. But for example, let's say it's Thursday and someone wants a hotel um, for one hotel room for one day this weekend. Since it's the week before the weekend, you can book them for one day as we may as, may as well make a sale. Now I'll tell you how to check people in. To check people in, you would ask them for their last name. Then you would click on their name 
that you were a master. Then you look down at the bottom of the window and it will say whether the room is clean or dirty. If the room is clean, it will be green. If it's dirty, it will be red. If it's dirty, we can have the guest write her phone number on the sign-in sheet and then tell her that we will give her a call once the room is ready. If the room is clean, you can look through the welcome packages over here and find their package. It goes by last name in alphabetical order. Then you would find the key card. Then you can give them your key card. Next, you would ask them for a credit card for damages and incidentals. Yes, incidentals are things that guests charge to the room, like DVD rentals fire logs and meals from the restaurant. Then you press F12 and swipe your credit card and give them their card. Then you can tell them to fill in the sign out sheet. They don't need to write down their email address or car info. We don't keep track of um, who's in our parking lot and our parking lot is far away from any other businesses so people who aren't guests are unlikely to be parking there they would need to write their initials to agree to not smoking in the room and to agree to our no pet policy and they would need to put their names put the names rather of anyone staying with them in their hotel room or chalet in the bottom half of the sign-in sheet. They would also need to write their phone number. Now, if they have rented a chalet, they might have fire log vouchers. You can redeem each fire log voucher for one fire log. So you would give them their fire logs. If they are staying in a hotel, they would get one free fire log per day. Their first fire log is already stocked in their hotel room. They'll be waiting for them after you've given them their fire logs. You can tell them about the welcome package. Tell them that it has restaurant hours, pool hours. There's no daily housekeeping, but if they want something cleaned or want some more supplies like towels, they can always give us a call. You can tell them that there's a DVD list and a TV channels list in their welcome package. And you would ask them how many adults and how many children will be in the room. You can change those numbers on the computer and the sign-in sheet if need be. Um, after that, you can give them wristbands for the pool based on how many people they said will be staying in their hotel room and chalet. After that, you can ask them how oh, if they know how to get to their chalet or hotel room. If they don't know how to get there, you can tell them how they can get to their chalet or hotel room. And you can use a map if that helps. The maps are right over there. Um, then you would ask them if it would be okay if we sent them a text message that they could respond to if they needed anything. After that, you can say have a good day or enjoy your stay or something along those lines, along those lines, and then the guests will leave. Then you would text them on Kipsu. 
if they agreed to being texted. After that, if they wrote their names on the sign-in sheet, you can add those names in on the computer by opening the room on Room Master and clicking Options. More names, then insert names. Then you're done. That's how you check people in. Try to keep an eye on Kipsu, the text messaging program. Make sure you're responding to guests as soon as you can on there. So we all use the same email. So you would have to check emails when you have time and respond to them. If there's a day when we sell uh, all the hotel rooms and all the chalets, we will receive a $25 bonus for that day. So it's quite nice. You will have to read the function book every shift. You flip to the page that says today's functions and then you can check to see if there are any functions. You would read about the functions so you can tell the guests where to go if they are attending a function and they ask you where to go. We have four salons that people can have functions or conferences in. Salons A, B, C, and D. Salons A, B, and C are right across from the front desk. Salon D is downstairs and to the left. Downstairs across from room 105 is a room that has a microwave, ice machine, vending machines and laundry machines. And one of the vending machines has Tylenol, shaving cream, toothpaste, tampons, um, toothpaste, tampons, and other useful items. There is also vending machines by the pool, but they don't have Tylenol and other stuff I just mentioned, and the other stuff I just mentioned. You know where the pool is, right? Okay, good. If a guest comes in asking for bath towels, tea towels, or hand towels, we do have some in the back. You can grab them. Um, also, we have coffee pods for curing coffee makers, sugar, coffee whitener, toilet paper, on office supplies in the back. Also, we have board games in the back. You will need to sign them out if anybody asks about them. The sign-in sheet is right over there. Right over there. To transfer a call on this phone, you would just type the extension of the person you wish to call. The extensions are all on this sheet. On the other phones, you will first need to press the transfer call button and type the extension in. Sometimes we will need to make maintenance reports. For instance, if someone says they want their linens changed on their bed, we can put a maintenance report for the housekeepers. Or if someone says hey, there is no hot water in their hotel room, we can make a maintenance report for the maintenance crew and people from maintenance housekeeping um, can look um, on their computers and see what needs to get done. To make a maintenance report on Room Master, you could click Find Desk, scroll down to Maintenance Reports, then click Insert. Then select whether it's Housekeeping or Maintenance Crew. Then you would put the location, a title for the report. Then you would add a date and timestamp so they would know when it was posted. Then you would write a brief description of the problem. And if it's urgent, you can click urgent and the report will appear in red. We can give the house person orders. Do you know what the house person does? 
or who they are. Okay, there are employees that drop off items like linens or coffee at guest hotel rooms or chalets. They set up tables and chairs and cutlery in the salons when people have functions or conferences in the salons. Maybe the servers actually put the cutlery in the salons actually, but I'm not sure. Um, anyways, they drive. They also drive staff to and from work. You can text the host person or call them. You can message them on Kipsu, telling them to drop off towels or linens at a guest hotel room or chalet. Or you can text them if they are needed to drive staff members home. You may have noticed that there's a lot of construction going on on our property. Do you know what we're building? We're building a Nordic spa. So there will be outdoor hot tubs there and a sauna and stuff like that. Uh, I think they said it will be running by next summer. Not this one, but next summer. People can book fire pits. We have eight fire pits, excuse me. Fire pits one to six are in by our parking lot. Fire pits seven and eight are near the construction site for the Nordic Spa. People can book fire pits for two hours and it's free. You would just write their room number on the sign-in sheet and put a little arrow that goes down one space for two hours. I'll show you how to make a key card. Let's make a key card for room 115. The key card sleeve for it is next to the sign-in sheets over there. Okay. Now click on vision line. Now get the key fob from over there. Um, I'll put the key card, the key fob, sorry, on the scanner now to log in. Okay, good. Now enter in the room number. Now, good. Now enter in how many nights they're staying two, three, however many. Now, which would be, it would be two nights or staying. Now, put how many cards you want to make. Hotel rooms get two cards and chalets get three cards. Yes, it's a hotel room. So it gets two cards. Now, click make card. Now put another card on the scanner. Now, good. Now remove it. I put the other card on the scanner. Yeah, and that's how you make key cards. You will get people who come here saying that their key cards don't work, or they will say that they lost their key card or locked himself out of their rooms or chalets. What you want to do then is make a joiner card because if you make a guest card, it will overwrite all the other cards that they have and they won't be able to use your other cards. So you would click the joiner button and make the card People can make a reservation by the phone, email, or by using our website. Now I'll show you how to make a reservation by email or phone. Ask them what dates they want to make the reservation for. Then click on availability and find the dates on here. Now these numbers tell you how many rooms are available for a certain room type on, on a certain date. The dates are up top and the room types are on the side here. If you are booking a chalet, it's 
easier to find the shellies if you click show by room number. I'm gonna have some gum. Do you want a piece of gum? Okay, great. Yeah. It's winter meat to gum by five. So, if they told you that they would want to book May 27th, we can see how many rooms are available for all the different room types for May 27th. So if they wanted a fireplace room with a stable view on May 27th, I can see that there are two rooms available for that room type. I can click on the number two on here and it will take me to this screen. Now I would select the number of nights they are staying for and the number of rooms that they want. And I would ask them how many adults and how many children are staying in the room and change that on here. Now I would ask them for their name, street address, email address, credit card number. After that, I would confirm the date and the room type with them to make sure everything's okay. Then I would click on send email. Then I would click on send daily room confirmation. And it would send him an email with the confirmation number on it and what room type, how many nights, and so on. Then click okay to confirm the reservation and you're done i'll show you how to make a duplicate reservation this is useful when people want to book two different room types and move from one room to the other people will do that sometimes if they want to stay a certain amount of nights but the room that they want is available for some, but all not all of those nights. After you've done the first reservation, you would click the reserve button. Then click by confirmation number. Then click end. Then right click on booking. Then click duplicate reservation. Then click OK. Now you can change the room type with date and click OK. If you're making a reservation for a chalet, you should assign the chalet right away. You do that by clicking assign rooms and click on a chalet and click assign room then click OK. I'm not sure why we ought to assign the chalet so soon. But I could look into that for you. Our cancellation policy is as long as they cancel before 14 days before the night of their booking. The first night of their booking, that is. They can cancel it and we won't charge the credit card. If they don't cancel before 14 days before their booking, we will charge the full amount of the stay or we could charge the full amount to their state onto their credit card. However, if they get sick or they can't make it here because of bad weather, we can cancel their reservation within the 14 days. We have e-bikes here, electronic bikes. We have eight of them. They're in the shed, a shed by the parking lot. Soon, we will get someone to take you out there to show you how to operate the e-bikes. That way you can tell the guests how to operate them. The brochures of the e-bikes are over there. Um, they have the prices on them. If you rent an e-bike, you will need the guest, guest to sign a waiver that states that they will use the e-bikes at their own risk and if they damage them, they will pay for the damages. You also need to do a $500 pre-authorization on the credit card 
if they say they are not staying at the black bear. So to do that, you would click this button on pre, click pre, then click pre-auth, then type in the amount, then click OK, then swipe your credit card. That pre-auth is like a damage deposit in case they damage the bikes. I think it is anyways. On around 11.30 a.m., we can start calling rooms. So you would be calling rooms to make sure people are checking out and, and to find out if we should charge their credit card because not everyone checks out at the front desk. Some people just leave their keys on a table in their room and leave the resort. If nobody answers our phone call, we can assume that they left. So I charge their credit card or for whatever they owe us. Make sure that before you call a room, you open up the room on Room Master. As sometimes people will get late checkouts. So we should call them later if that's the case. If a guest has a late checkout, it will say late checkout in the red text on this window. Um, people will come up here with their receipt from the VLT machines and we will need to give them the money that they're owed. You pay them out of the VLT flow, which is in that drawer. The passcode for the VLT flow is 517. Now I'm going to show you how to do a cash out. So open up the drawer over there and take out the receipts. Now sort the receipts. Visa in one pile, MasterCard in another pile, one pile for debit, and one pile for American Express. Now add up all the Visa receipts using the calculator. If the number ends in point zero zero, you will need to input that on the calculator. For example, if it's 300 decimal zero zero, then you will need to enter the decimal place. If you just enter 300, it will mess up your calculations. When you're finished adding up the pizzas, you would press the T button for total. Now you can press the arrow button so the calculator prints out more tape. So when you rip the tape off, you don't rip through the numbers. Now you can rip the tape off. Now you can put the tape onto the front of the pile of Visa receipts and put it in place using a paper clip. Now you can do the same for American Express debit and MasterCard. Now you can press front desk on Room Master. Now click the shift report. Now um, put in shift one because this is for shift one, the morning shift. You can check to see if your totals match with the totals on the shift report. Do they match? Okay, great. Now you can see how much cash you need to take out from the till. People could have paid for items like newspapers, fire logs, or TV rentals, DVD rentals with cash. If they did, it will say that on the computer and it will tell you how much to take out. Yeah, that's right. You will take out $8 worth of cash. Now add up how much cash there is in the till. It should add up to 500. Great, nice work. Now you can print off two copies of the shift report. Now you can check off MasterCard, Visa, and debit card, and American Express on one shift report because all the totals match. Now you can check off the $8 cash on the other shift report. Now fold 
the shear reports in half. So the back side, blank side, is on the inside. Now the sacks that are over there. Um, get them, please. Put the eight dollars cash inside the shift report. Then it has the check mark beside the eight dollars cash. Put the bills in the folded paper and place the paper in the sack. Now, now put the change behind the shift report. Good. Now you can put the receipts in this shift report. Put this shift report back in the sack. Or in the sack, should I say. Now put both sacks in that drawer. drawer. And that's how you do cash home. If you have a guest making a complaint and it's quite serious, you can let management know about it. You could email the general manager or tell our manager Amanda about it. If someone wants to pay with a gift card, you would press the star button on this machine. Then click gift. Then click balance. Then swipe the card to find the balance. It's important to do this as if you tried to re redeem a gift card for more money than it's worth. It won't work. So then you can go to redeem. Then swipe the card. Then enter the amount. And press OK. We sell park passes here. If they are parked here at the resort, they do not need a park pass. But if they're going outside the resort, visiting the park, then they do need a park pass. The rates of the park passes are over there. Um, as you can see, we have several different types. Senior, adult, individual, family pass. And you can get them for a certain amount of days, up to five days. And we also offer annual passes. Um, the park passes, except for annual passes, always expire at 1 p.m. the next day. Now, before you start writing on the form, take it out from the pack that it's in. That's because if you write on it while it's still in the pack, <laughs> The writing will go right through the form you're writing on and onto other forms below it. Now, for example, if you're going to write a family pass for one day, you would write FG1D over here. You would write the time and date over here. Then you would write the expiry date over here. So you can take the payment for the park pass either by cash or by debit or credit card after you take the payment you have to post it so you would click on folios then click on desk folios then type p then click park passes now click insert then put the code for how they paid so if they pay with visa you can put the code for a visa. Next, you can put the amount they paid with. Then you would put that type of park pass. What type of park pass it was. So FG1D for a family group one day. Sometimes we have to put people on checkout hold. Checkout hold is for when people don't have a valid credit card for the payment. So we would put them on checkout hold so we don't forget about them, I guess. I'm not quite sure actually. But to do a checkout hold, you would click folios, then click guest to check out, then right click on the room, then click checkout hold. Employees pay stubs are in this drawer down here. It's like a receipt for your paycheck, in case you didn't know. We lend people the games room stuff, uh, pool table cues and balls, foosball balls, and shuffleboard stuff. 
when people take that stuff, make sure to get their room number or chalet number and sign a mouth on their cheat over there. You would have to take you will have to take messages on the phone. It's pretty simple. Just press the message button and then type the password 8502. You can write down the number and we can call them later. You will have people call on the you have to call people rather on the wait list sometimes. So we do keep a wait list. That means that if people cancel their reservations, we can make reservations for people who are on the wait list. There's a checkout list over there. You can check off tasks that you have completed. It's a reminder of what you should get done during or try to get done during your shift. You can sanitize the desks, phones, keyboards, and mice. If somebody has lost something and the lost and found, you can write it down in the book that's in the drawer. You can write down what they lost, where they lost it, their contact information. You can also make a maintenance note for housekeeping about the lost item so if the housekeepers find it they can bring it to us and we can get it to the right person sometimes you'll have to transfer a balance for example a guest one person might have reserved both a and b side of a duplex so we might have charges for the a side of the duplex and b side of the duplex so you could charge him twice using the interact machine. Um, but that takes time and it costs us commission to each time we do that. So what you can do is open up the room, click options, then click transfer balance. Then click on the room you want to transfer it to and then it's done. Sometimes you might want to transfer a charge to a different folio. So for example, two people who stayed in the same hotel room or chalet might want to pay separately. One person might say they want to pay for the first night and one person might want to pay for the second night. So you can right click on the charge for the second night and move it to a phone folio. I'm not sure why it's called phone folio, but let's not focus on the name. It's just a place for you to transfer the charge to. But, um, so you transfer the charge to the phone folio, and you can charge, change, sorry, change the address of the folio so that their address appears on the receipt. That's often what people want is for their address to appear on the sheet. One important thing I've learned is don't sign out until you know for sure that your shift is over because the manager could want to have a 10 minute conversation with you after your shift is supposed to end and you could pick up a phone call because the phone's ringing. You don't always know when your shift is going to end. So you don't want to work and not get paid for it, right? The schedule is subject to change, so keep an eye on it. It sucks to come to work only to find out that your schedule has changed and you're not supposed to start your shift for another two hours. Sometimes the servers will come and do their cash outs. You would get the sacks out of that drawer. Um, and they would give you the money to put in the yellow sack. Sometimes the servers have negatives, meaning that they're owed money. That negatives will be in the little envelopes. In the red sack, you can give them their negatives. We do rent out DVDs, if I didn't say so already. It's pretty simple. You would just open up that drawer and ask the guest for the DVD code. Then you find the DVD in that drawer and sign it out. So you would get the guest's last name, room number, and write those down. 
you write the date, you put your initials on the bottom, and you write the amount of the charge, whether it's cash or charge to the room. Then you would open up the person's room on Room Master and go insert, then use the code for DVD, then type the amount the customer is paying, $3 per DVD. Next, you write the DVD code in the voucher line. Well, I think that's about all I can teach you for today. I hope you learned a thing or two. I certainly don't expect you to remember all of this. Like most people, you probably won't remember how to do all the tasks until you actually do them for yourself and do them a few times. Do you have any questions? No? Okay.